Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Microsoft Flight Simulator guys and today we are finally getting to check out the new Big Radials Norseman. This is a very awesome and very very old aircraft that was used very heavily into the more remote regions of Canada and today we're going to check it out. Make sure if you guys can that you join us at Flight Sim Expo 2023. That's right. Overkill Simulations is going to be present this year, guys, at the Lone Star Museum in Houston, Texas. If you guys are interested in joining us there, be sure to check down the description below. There is a coupon code that can save you guys a bit of money uh, using my personal reference uh, to get you there. Again, that'll save you a bit of cash in your Flight Sim Expo 2023 experience. This is going to be June 23rd through the 25th of 2023. Uh, again, in Houston, Texas, at the Lone Star Flight Museum. I went a few years ago in Las Vegas, and they are an absolute great time. There's some very, very informative and educational seminars to help better your flight simming experience, as well as a ton of developers of both hardware and software that you guys actually get to try out, essentially a try before you buy experience, as well as talking with the developers themselves and uh, finding out what the products are all about. So again, guys, it's going to be Flight Sim Expo 2023 in Houston, Texas. I hope to see you guys all there. Don't forget to use my coupon code that you can find down in the description below. If you are interested in acquiring any of my Overkill's tutorial guides or simply interested in supporting the channel, please consider joining me on Patreon. Patreon subscribers level tier two and above have access to all of my guides as well as any future guides that come along down the road. Patreon link can be found in the description below and thank you to all of my current subscribers. All right, guys. So first off, I want to offer you guys and Big Radials a huge apology, guys. I wanted to have this video out actually before the release of the aircraft. Unfortunately, um, we had some family issues that came up and then some other events that really took me away during the weekend. So I do apologize for uh, my absence the last few days. You guys know I do try to get a video out at least once a day. So I do apologize for the delay on this. However, super excited to check this aircraft out. Big Radials, guys, has always produced some very awesome aircraft for the Microsoft Flight Simulator community. And I'm really happy that they were willing to continue to share their work with me and give me a chance to give you guys my thoughts on this aircraft. Now, we're going to be flying it from a more um, simplified, simplified perspective, guys. We will be probably just doing the auto start, but uh, we're going to poke around, see which one comes to comes to mind here. So let's go ahead and get started. Obviously, with the exterior textures, guys, Big Radials is no different than some of the other major developers here. They do a fantastic job with their exterior textures, especially bringing that vintage look of these aircrafts into the simulator. Now, we are here up in northern Canada, guys, in, in a far uh, remote region, trying to simulate a real world uh presentation of the aircraft and where you might find this aircraft being operated. So uh, let's go ahead and jump into the cockpit and we'll uh, see what's going on from the business end. Now, as we get started inside the cockpit, guys, they have always done a fantastic job with their vintage aircraft in keeping them looking vintage. From their color tone to the detail work that they put into, I really appreciate the aesthetics that they always put into it. You don't, you're not going to find anything shining and glimmering and well polished in any of the big radios aircraft, simply because of the fact that these aircraft are significantly older. I think this aircraft dates somewhere between the 1930s and 1940s range of aircraft, so it is definitely very, very old. Now, one of the things that I've always loved about big radials is the attention to detail that they put into things, guys. You have everything from their fuel flow valves. You have your, or not your fuel flow valves. Talk about that in a second, excuse me. You have their bench seats that are, are clickable here. We can actually move the camera into the back here and operate the doors. And actually, I think that is the fuel tank. Um, so we can come back here, grab your doors, close them and close them. Fold your seats up and down if you choose, as you guys saw in the beginning. There's always a ton of detail and things to look out for with big radials aircraft. Uh, and it makes it fun for me. You guys know, if you guys have been watching my channel for any length of time, that I love those kind of details. I think they're fun. Some people think they're silly. I don't. I enjoy it. I think it just adds a little bit more uh, to, to the sim here. Now, <laughs> one of the things that I have been struggling with with this particular aircraft is trying to close the door from the inside. I don't know if it's something that you can do, so it might be something that you wanna watch out for when thinking about custom cameras. So let's grab that handle there. 
We'll swing back out over here, close the pilot side door, and bring ourselves back inside. Now, they have a very simplified version in which you can start the aircraft in the documentation, and then they also have a very detailed version if you choose to walk through that. In the interest of keeping the video more to the aspect of experiencing the aircraft and flying the airplane, um, I'm going to probably just do an auto start for today. But I am going to tell you guys that I have done a full startup in this aircraft, and it is very, very well done, very, very well written. And even in the documentation itself, it actually states to you guys, what you're looking for or, or to pick which one you're looking for. If you're looking for the simplified or if you're looking for the full procedural startup, uh, it takes you through all of that as well as obviously, as you guys saw, having it here built into the simulator at the ready. Uh, very, very well done. I love that kind of stuff. Now, the other thing is they take you through every single gauge, handle, light, switch, et cetera, that is available in the aircraft as well as features. Let's get that window rolled up because I'm going to forget if I don't. Uh, there we go. I find that... Uh, Come on, there we go. just sort of pull it down one direction. I can't remember if I rolled this one down. I don't think I did. Nope, I did not. Good. Okay, so a few things that we will do just to get started here. I'm going to go ahead and set my uh, default view. We will be using track IR guys, fret not. I know some of you wonder why I don't use it. I don't typically use it in the beginning uh, because typically, especially when you're walking through the startups and things like that. Look at this. Check us out. Boom. GPS guys. That's what this one is. So we're going to be taking a look at that here in just a second so you guys can see that. So I brought that down. Uh, let me set my default view. That's why I wanted that down. So this as our first save. It'll be pretty good once we get uh, the track IR going. Oops, went too far. We have other various systems that are available. Check it out. Performance loadout screens. Check this, check this off. Or check this off. Check this off. Check this out. Old CC CRTV, guys. Check that out. You ain't going to find any touch screens in real life in this thing, but this is pretty awesome. So before, you have all of your checklists that are also available here. Very, very detailed. Very, very well done. I love what they've done here. I always love their aircraft. They just do so many cool things. You have your doors configuration or doors and engine alerts, et cetera, that are listed here. Uh, I'm trying to remember what all of this does. I don't remember what that one does to be completely honest, but we can go status here. You can set your payload types, passengers, cargoes, mixed. So if we wanted to do mixed cargo, we're going to do in crates. You can check your doors here as well. Notice that they came on. And you also have your shutters available in the event of uh, the engine getting too cold, uh, which we're probably going to have to use today. So we might as well, uh, we'll get those shuttered set now i can't remember let's go into settings cold and dark ready to taxi let's go ahead and do that there's our gps our nice garmin let's go to the outside and take a listen Give her some power so you guys can hear it. Like I said, they always do a fantastic job with their work. I love what they do with their stuff. And they're always so creative. Like this is a very creative way to present uh, your different uh, menus and available uh, features to the aircraft without having to get too far down. You can have a help button if you guys need to figure out what you're doing. You have your autopilot information, nav, heading, like really, really good stuff. They've really done a great job bringing it all together while maintaining that nostalgia. You know, um, let's go ahead and put that back. I got to remember how to bring it back down, to be honest. <laughs> uh, I don't think I ever turned it off last time. Excuse me a second. Uh, I don't remember how I did that. Oh, you have your antenna? I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, I missed that before. I did not catch that before. I'm trying to remember how to put it away. I do not remember how I did that. What do we have an alarm for? I 
can't remember how I put the screen away. Oh, duh. Click on the handle, genius. All right, you have a nice electrical panel. Everything very, very easy to see. Let's see here, we got our navigation tail lights. Oh, we don't need the landing light on just yet. The electrical panel, I do recommend setting a view to, so we're gonna do that right now. Uh, simply because it's a little, obviously, it's hard to get over here to it from the pilot seat. It looks like everything else is good to go. All right. And one thing I did not take into consideration when I parked it here was, I think I can turn it around. Guess we'll find out in a minute. All right, let's get the head tracker turned on. Let's go for a quick flight. All right, we're gonna use some differential braking, which seems to be working beautifully. We've got that left wheel locked up. Whoa. Landing lights are on. Right? Nope, nope. Now there. Kind of squeak past there. I think we're looking for a takeoff speed of right around 110 miles an hour. So flaps one for takeoff or short field here. She is already pretty short field. Doesn't take much to get her going. All right, slowly but smoothly advancing the uh, throttle. Get ready to dance those rudder pedals as she is a tail dragger. Max power. Waiting for that tail wheel to come off the ground a bit. There she goes, starting to dance. Fluttering it back and forth. We're live. Oof, nasty weather today. RPMs back down. Let's get those manifold pressure back down. Beautiful. Oil's getting too hot, looks like. I'm reading that right. Oh. 
I guess shutters wouldn't make sense. That would make it even hotter. This is where some of that gets a little confusing to me over time. Can't tell if that's oil pressure or oil temperature. Flight model seems absolutely phenomenal. Very enjoyable experience here. I love their work though, they always do great jobs. We've got fuel transfer switch there. Recommendation is a switch about every 15 minutes. See, we got something else down there that's not happy with us. Oh, see, they are too cold. Maybe I should put the shutters in. See, that makes more sense to me. Definitely an aircraft I'm going to have to pay closer attention to. Problem is I don't remember how to activate the shutters. Oh, that's the fuel pump. I didn't want that. scary. <laughs> I thought I had everything memorized before I got started here. Is, is that the shutter? I think that's aileron trim. Yeah, that is. Or rudder trim. Yeah, it's rudder trim. That's rudder trim. That's our flaps. That's supposed to be an AC vent, but they uh, it's disabled because it stinks. Oh, shutter. They're getting warmer. Okay, so you just pull it. I see. There we go. Ah! Mountain! <laughs> okay, looks like that's fully shut. Alright, let's, uh, let's turn us around here. That definitely helped the temperature. There we go. That's the temperature I was watching. So the other one must be pressure. I'll have to take a closer look at it again. I thought I had, like I said, I thought I had it memorized. I thought I studied the guide well enough, but apparently I was mistaken. Apparently I was mistaken. Still running kind of cold, huh? Even with the shutters closed.
We did take a noticeable loss to power when we switched the shutters. Switch over to the left tank here. Without dying. Ah! A lot of things to, to watch with these old aircraft, that's for sure. I love the work these guys do. By the way, guys, this aircraft is only $20 US. $20 US, guys. And you can find it from big radials themselves, or I believe also over at Orbitz. Only 20 bucks for an absolutely stunning, feature-rich aircraft. It has uh, both C, stall, and uh, just standard landing uh, wheel configuration. So you've got uh, the amphibious uh, availability for those of you who are real big into that type of aircraft. I can think of uh, a couple of you, one of them ends with Ranger, who would probably love this aircraft. We're going to head back here and then see what it takes to fly or to uh, land this thing. Weather is just piss poor today, man. Nasty weather. I couldn't remember if this one had wind information. I felt like it did, but I'm not seeing it displayed. Coming up on our airfield again. I believe we have to pass it to do our landing. There she is. Checking that altitude. And some power back here. I don't even notice the crane. Nope. Our windsock, I just saw it. We need to turn around.
Yep, there's the windsock right there. You can barely see it. Definitely telling us which way our wind is coming from. I'm going to extend out a little bit here because I don't think I can make a landing quite that short. Approach speed, I believe, is right around 95 uh, knots. I always come in on a really shallow approach with tail draggers because I tend to, to botch them a little bit, but I'm going to try a little steeper with this one. Giving a little bit of pull on this one. Flaps one, rolling in. Manifold pressure, I'm getting too low with it. There we go. Tail dragger scale the hell out of me. Full prop. Got a little slow. Maybe. Oof. Dance, dancing it, dancing it, dancing it. Easy on the tail. Easy on the brakes. Easy on the brakes. Easy on the brakes. Easy on the brakes. Whew. Gentle stop. Gentle stop. Whew. Okay. Right here, right here. Come on. Differential braking. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Whoa, too much. Too much. Too much. Ah! Oh, castering tail wheels. Scare the hell out of me. Oh, I hit something. I freaking hit something. Wonder what I hit. Collided with an object, caused critical damage. Must have hit a damn tree or something that was nearby. Damn it. Those castering tail wheels, man. And that's what the cool part when they're really modeled very, very well. Guys, again, this is 20 US dollars. Uh, you can pick it up from Big Radio's website themselves. I highly recommend their aircraft. Their aircraft is a ton of fun to fly. I have just about everything that Big Radio's has ever put out. Um, and it's been a pleasure to be able to work with them and be able to fly their aircraft. And I'm super, super grateful that they actually donated this one uh, to the channel for, for you guys' uh, review ability here. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this flight. I don't think there's a need to start back into it at this point. Uh, I hope you guys have uh, been just excited about all the cool features and the way that the aircraft flew as I was. It's definitely an aircraft I think you could take into a lot of really interesting situations and have a good time with. Give it a shot, guys. It's got that perfect balance of ease for the beginner and challenge for the experienced pilot, as well as, like I said, all of the feature-rich uh, things that they did with it, uh, especially in the neat ways that they found to integrate it. You know, they didn't just slap on an LCD screen somewhere. They always find very excuse me, very unique ways of putting that stuff in there. So as always, guys, stay safe and healthy, and I will see you in the next one. And once again, big shout out to Big Radios. Thank you guys for the continued support and the love that you guys give the channel. I appreciate you. Bye-bye.